Welcome to the world of viruses. We'll be zooming in to see how a virus infects, replicates, and multiplies within a whole cell. The viral life cycle in general. Stage 1. Attachment Attachment is termed as a specific binding of the attachment site of virus on its whole cell receptor site. This process is highly specific and works just like a lock and a key. Envelope virus, automyxoviridiae, for instance, have protein spikes namely hemagglutinin HA and neuraminidase NA. Hemagglutinin binds specifically to red blood cells, causing infection. Naked virus, piconaviridiae, for example, does not have an envelope. It has a canyon-like surface capsid. The capsid is icosahedral and each of the 12 corners of vertices forms the intersection of 5 triangle faces. Each triangle face has 3 structural proteins. Amino acids found in these gaps or canyons are in fact responsible for attachment. Stage 2. Penetration there are two general mechanisms in which viruses use for penetration. The first method is a direct fusion of the viral envelope with the cytoplasmic membrane of a host cell. The virus leaves its envelope behind, merging it with the host cell surface membrane. This delivers the viral capsid into the cytoplasm of the host cell. The second method involves the endocytosis of a virus. Endocytosis is a process that involves the internalization of a plasma membrane in the form of a vesicle, enclosing the material to be taken in. What happens is that the plasma membrane deepens gradually until a vesicle is created. Then, protons H plus are pumped into the endocytic vesicle membrane, lowering the pH condition. After which, the endocytic vesicle then fuses with a lysosome. Lysosome is an organelle that has degradative enzymes which are active at low pH conditions. Thus, these enzymes break down the membrane, releasing the viral capsid into the whole cell. Stage 3 Uncoating Uncoating refers to all events that occur between the entry of a virion into its host cell and the beginning of expression of the viral genome. The process of uncoating may include removal or rearrangement of capsid proteins and loss of spikes to allow the genome to access to the cellular machinery for the activities of the central dogma. Proteins found in the cytoplasm that are intended for use in the nucleus contain sequences of amino acids termed nuclear localization signals. These signals can only be recognized by cytoplasmic receptors called importance. Importance facilitate the transport of protein to the nucleus. An example would be lentiviruses. They have nuclear localization signals associated with the new DNA molecules that enable the nucleic acid molecules to pass through nuclear pores. What happens is that the capsid carried along microtubules comes to a docking position on the nuclear pore. Microtubules then shrink towards nuclear pore disassembling the capsid simultaneously. Last but not least, the viral DNA and its associated proteins are drawn through a nuclear pore into the nucleoplasm. Stage 4 Transcription and Replication Following right after the process of uncoating is transcription and replication. First step, the DNA of the virus gets transcribed into high molecular weight RNA molecules. Second step, whole cell modifies RNA by adding a 5' cap 
and three prime polyadenine tail, removing any introns. Introns are non-coding sequence. Third step, the modified RNA travels out of nucleus into cytoplasm and gets translated in the ribosomes to form primary structured proteins that are linear in shape. These proteins further fold by disulfide bonds, for example, and cleave by phosphorylation, for example, to become active. These steps may vary slightly in both RNA and DNA virus. RNA viruses have problem using its RNA genome as a copy template. Thus, it requires the help of RNA polymerase to copy RNA genome in the host DNA. As for DNA viruses, they encounter problem in replicating. In a host cell, a primer 3' prime OH must be present at the end. Thus, DNA viruses develop strategies like circularizing its DNA, elongation of 3' prime OH group, and reverse transcription to ensure replication. Stage 5 Assembly The assembly of viral capsid is rather ambiguous. The following steps in assembly are some assumptions made by microbiologists. In the assembly of RNA icosahedral capsid, the first step is nucleation reaction. Nucleation reaction refers to the interaction of RNA with a few capsid subunits to form an initiation complex. Then, in the second step, dimers made up of individual subunits are added to form a cap on vertices. Dimers are a biological entity that is basically made up of two monomers. Lastly, Additional dimers are added subsequently to the growing shell. In the assembly of DNA icosahedral capsid virions, the first step will be the condensation of genomic DNA with histones to produce nucleosomes. This results in a compact particle around which capsid is built and histone is lost during the formation of capsid. In short, the process of assembly involves viruses packaging their genomes in gift wrappers. These gift wrappers are the viral capsids. Stage 6 Release Generally, viruses use nasty methods to get out of their host cells. Naked viruses usually cause host cells to lice or break apart, releasing new baby virions. It has been suggested that there may be some disruption of lysosomes, where lysosomal hydrolytic enzymes are released into the cytoplasm, breaking the cell apart. Enveloped viruses, on the other hand, adopt another strategy in releasing their virions, that is, budding. Firstly, viral glycoproteins and proteins are inserted into target host membranes. Then, translation occurs in viral mRNAs coding for membrane proteins instead of host cell mRNAs. Next, the viral nucleocapsid nucleus envelope is assembled and brought to the host cell membrane shortly after which exocytosis takes place, where the nucleocapsid becomes enwrapped in membrane to form a vesicle that is then pinched off from membrane to release the enveloped virion. The new baby virions then go on to infect more healthy neighboring cells. Thank you. This is a production of Virology, the non-living biology.